Good evening, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you are. It's good evening for me. So now I would like to do a little routine. I finally got my chin up bar uh, at a height that's comfortable for me to work on that rehabilitation of my shoulders and uh, wrists. It's going to be both for all of it and so I stretched a few hours ago then I did another video about um, wellness but another department and exercise physical exercise and uh, now I just did it again uh, two different exercises and oh boy does it open up and it helps to get that stickiness you know um, out of my shoulder blades it feels really good it helps you be able to breathe better so i'm gonna be doing a video on uh, chin up bar exercises uh, to help you regain um, more mobility flexibility in your shoulders and just feel like yeah, yeah i can breathe now kind of thing and then that you can stretch your arms my arms are straighter, shoulders still need to be worked on, but it feels so much better. So, all right, let's see what are we going to be working on today. There's quite a few things we could be working on, but I'm going to do a routine that's going to include a little bit of everything where you want to target different muscle group and also do a bit of stretching at the end on the floor. You have time to do that. So we're just going to do, now especially that I did loosen up with a cheddar bar and did nice stretches through here. Um, now I, I feel that this is just so easy to do, or much easier anyway. I'm going to keep my thumbs pointing forward here. I'm just exaggerating the movement so you really see what I am doing. But your hands can be really relaxed as long as your thumbs are pointing forward. Okay, just like this, you can do a little bit of rotation here um, to the side, even though you're not using any weights and it's only your body weight standing, you're still engaging these muscles every time you're twisting like this, you're engaging your hip flexors on the front. So any of combination of different plane, uh, linear, sagittal, uh, and horizontal and vertical, all of them, if you can combine as many as you can in, a, in one movement or uh, uh, one movement series is really great. So here I have nice relaxed loose knees, a little bit bent and um, I'm just help allowing my body to rotate. I'm keeping my head straight first of all to be able to look at you and second of all because when you do that it's allowing actually uh, to create a pivot um, in a rotation with your spine where you are freeing the tissues and I'm gonna go the other way. The tissues that are um, obviously stemming from your spine, it's helping to unstick them and it's gonna help you engage your hips too. So it's a little bit awkward this way for me. Whereas going back uh, this way, backward feels more smooth. Going forward doesn't feel as smooth for some reason. I don't know if you feel the same way. So try not to bring your chin up too much. I know for photo shoots or whatever reason they say look up but luckily I don't have a double chin and even if I did I would not do it because it's not good for me uh, you want to make sure your neck muscles get elongated and in order to do that uh, you need to have a little bit of a chin tuck nice and relaxed okay so we did enough of those shake it off let's do some circle movements with our arms one two three four five backward one two, three, four, five. And now you could add five and switch. One, two, three, four, five. My leg wanted to go down. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna go backward. I'm gonna go forward. 
one, two, three, four, five, one and forward, one, two, three, four, five, backward, one, two, three, four, five, forward, one, two, three, four, five. So here you're working your balance in coordination between upper and lower. You can do it as high as you want here. Just make sure you keep your proper balance. I'd rather you stay here and keep your hips nice and square and keep that position as opposed to falling because you're losing balance. Okay, so all right, let's keep going. So now we're gonna do tap. And you're gonna clap your hands. So it's gonna help your shoulders. So your thumbs keep pointing forward, okay? Two. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Good, and go forward. Two, three, four, five, one. Nice tummy tuck in. Four and five. Now we're gonna cross, we're gonna go here. One, two, three, four. Uh, so here, see, uh, you could even include here, and that's giving a twist to your body. One, two, three, chin down a bit. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna reach up one, and there's squat. Four, five, and one, two, three, Four, five, good. One more time. Two, three, four, five. Last one. One, two, three, four, five. Good. All right, so there's another exercise that I've done in my dance routine, and it goes here. So you're gonna engage your hip, and you're gonna turn to the side, okay? And we're gonna add, so you're just gonna do that first, then we're gonna add the arm. Actually, do the arm separately and then the lower. So the arm uh, go like this, okay? And the body goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we have the arm, okay? One, two, three, Let's make a fist as you go here. And now button. One, two, and, and lock your arms here. That's gonna help you so you don't fall. One, two, or lose your balance. Three, four, five. One, two, three, squeeze it for me. And uh, um, your bum as well. And you can go lower if you wanna be more advanced. Um, but if you're still learning the move, and you need to work on your balance, just keep it up here, okay? Just to slide in. If you want to go lower, go here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. So if you feel your toes are, you know, you're getting your toes caught in between each other and on the mat, you could do it with shoes on. But then you wouldn't want to do it on the mat. You would do it on the surface here. Just have to see if you have enough glide for the motion. Okay, good. So this already just gets your cardio going a little bit. So I'm not gonna repeat all the steps um, because I want to move on to something else. But you get the idea, this can be very helpful. Uh, if you want to add more cardio, get you in your cardio even more going, you could walk in place. Just simply like this. And if it's not enough, you can go up. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Perfect. All right, and if so that's not enough for you, you can do it even hopping, but then that would mean that would not be low impact. So just keep that in mind. If you want to do this, one, two, three, four, five, switch. And uh, 
Okay, here. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Alrighty. Now, if this is not enough, then let me know and we'll come up with something in another video or something just for you. Now I'm going to get to the floor because I want to combine a variety of things. Sometimes I've warmed up and we work multiple head to toe uh, exercise. Let's do a bit on the floor. So I'm going to show you how to do the plow. There's a couple of different steps you can do with a plow. If you are not advanced enough to do the plow, hopefully you can see me well as I'm on the side here of the camera, off-centered. Uh, so it might come out weird. I might look a bit bigger on the photo, but on the camera. But that's because I'm not exactly in the front, in the middle of the lens, okay? So here, I'm laying on my back. I'm going to put a pillow for my neck support. And helps with my vertigo. Uh, symptoms. My arms are pointing, uh, palm of your hand for my hands forward up. I'm going to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now here I'm touching the wall, but if you didn't and you were up here, it's completely fine. Especially if your knees are still bent because your calves and hamstrings are so tight that you can't straighten the legs and that's only as far as you can go. Not a big deal. Stay right here. Practice one leg over the other here to stretch a bit more of the ligaments in front and flex as much as you can your feet and then eventually you'll be able to go closer so I'm going to go closer now still using my pillow and there we go so this is another this is an extra step if, and if this is not enough and you want to go further and you want to rest here you could do it underneath or uh, against a dining room table um, and then your bottom would be underneath the table but uh, really all I like to do is just stretch it this way and that's kind of the, the same thing there's options so here I'm stretching the back of my leg hamstring my neck is supported I'm gonna use my left hand put it on the left side of my foot and pull this side down as this usually doesn't get us stretched uh, as much and then rotate here to put my foot in a neutral position so I can feel the stretch a bit deeper and I'm going to make sure my other leg is uh, as a hip pointing forward as well with my feet so this was really good and if your leg falls over to the side try and get it back to center like in the middle of your body it's a bit to your left, but closer to the center. That's if you're using your left leg, obviously. And one thing you could do if you're not that far, but you're further than right here, for example, you can use a strap to help you go however far you can. Or you could even do this. You could do it with your shoes. Doing it with your shoes on add resistance because there's extra weight. Also, since it's wider and longer, it allows you to be resting on something and your leg will really technically be here and at the angle. But uh, there's, this is really helpful. Nice deep breath in. Palm of your hand face up and just pull your shoulders down toward your bum and switch leg. Breath in. Hold. And breath out. Repeat, breathe in. Hold. Breath out. Again. Breathe in. Hold. Breath out. Switch leg. Breathe in. Hold, breath out. Breathe in. Hold, breath out. 
So you get the gist of this. So I did it by a count of three to three seconds. Breathe in, three seconds. Hold, three seconds. Breathe out, three seconds. You could do an account of seven, so two, three, five, or higher if you want, but that's pretty advanced then, as you have to do breathe in, hold, breathe out. That works really well to get you um, grounded. So from here, I'm going to bend my knees, and I'm going to move away. So if you don't want to pull away like this, you could go on your side. It's actually better this way, and you're going to move away from the wall. I'm going to use my bolster here, move this here so I can use it here later. And I'm going to show you how I go further in the plow. Now I'm going to switch to my smaller side of my pillow here for now. Eventually I'm going to remove the pillow. So here this bolster is a wedge. Um, but you could use a big thick pillow even uh, whatever you can find, a comforter, um, something that um, will allow you to uh, bring some height here this way. But it has to be something sturdy, like a broad yoga bone work. Okay, so from here, you let your back relax. I need to bring my neck down a bit actually, so I'm just gonna use uh, the mat. And keeping my arms to the side. I'm going to bring my knees up. And it's like a child pose, but really, this is easy then to relax this way because my body was prepared with this and stretched. I started with a wall, now I'm using the bolster. Keeping my knees bent, I'm just letting my body, my legs roll over, and I'm gonna keep my legs like this. I'm gonna use this pillow here, because it's gonna help me when my legs are gonna straighten to make contact with something without uh, using the floor yet, which is lower. So I'm gonna, I'm holding the pillow actually, and I'm gonna go however far I can. And resting my legs on the pillow. I'm gonna tilt my body over a bit to the side so that you can see me in a different angle with the camera. Just stay where you are. It will give you a little bit of a different perspective with a couple of angles. Okay, so here, and let's start all over. Let's go back in that position here. You can even do a little bit of a tuck with your hands. Just give a nice stretch to your lower back. And then letting your legs roll over. Now I have my hands over the pillow. I'm more comfortable, looser. Adjusting my shoulders and I'm gonna lift my hips here with the strength of my back and abs. I can assist with my hands and I have contact of, the, of my feet with the pillow as support. And here my elbows are against the bolster to help me push over. Keep your neck straight, do not turn your neck while you're doing this. As you can hear my voice has a little bit, has changed a bit, that's because obviously I'm restricting the airway, but it is safe to do if you go slow and take your time and always listen to your body. So here I'm gonna cross over here like I did against the wall earlier, it's going to give a bit of a stretch in here. Your legs may be straight, your legs may be a bit bent. Just bring them however far straight you can because uh, you should be able to have your knees straight to, straight to stretch your hamstrings. However, 
um, if you are that tight, like I know some people are, or your legs, your knees will never, not never really straighten all the way if you are this far into the bend because they're way too tight in here. Yet here you're stretching your hamstring if you are tight. For me, it's not, it, it is stretching, but it's not really challenging it, we'll say. So I can add pushing against in my against my hands going uh, against my knees with my hands going up I can uh, touch my toes if I can obviously if I cannot and I won't I do have that bolster here still giving me support which is great and I'm working on flexing my heels in order to get more of a pull and stretch and um, working that fascia restriction in my legs, hips, and thighs, and actually even my back um, can feel it. So here I'm going to remove the pillow here, and that's going to make me go a bit further. Put both of my feet on the floor, and I'm going to do a little bit of narrow tension with pointing and flexing, point and flex, point and flex. So every time I point and flex, I have to move my body. So I'm using my leg, my arms being against the floor, and here it's make, I'm, I'm lifting my body, which is making use my abs. Point and flex. Let's move. There we go, push this further away. Flex, point, flex, point, flex, point, flex, point. You want to challenge a bit, keep your knees closer, legs closer together. And what I suggest, if you feel that um, it's putting pressure on your cervical, like on the spinous processes directly on the bone in the middle, you could put a towel if the mat is not enough, I can feel a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, it's putting too much contact there for me. So I have to remember to grab a towel to create a bit of softness here at the C6, C7. I do have to watch my cervical and um, uh, thoracic, uh, even lumbar cervical, lumbar uh, spine. So uh, that is something that I suggest you may do. I definitely should do that. All right, so from here, you can go further if you can, and you're here. Now, this is kind of a plow pose with your legs bent over touching the floor. You could do it with your legs going up here. So if you can't bring your both legs First, then you do one at a time. And down. And switch. And down. And switch. And down. And switch. And down. So using the pillow here, I have the bolster, actually helps. So I can engage my back muscles. To do that exercise. So that's as far as I'm going to take it for today. Now it's good to do the opposite, to stretch your back the other way and get your hip flexors elongated, <coughs> excuse me, try and get your hip rotating forward, not out, there you go, and stretch down this leg, flex, and let your body relax down on the pillow and switch, flex your feet, so instead of letting your heel go in the middle of your body, pull your heel so it's, you basically don't see it. 
You only see your knee and your thigh. But if I'm just looking this way, I do not see that I have a leg, my right leg here or foot, I do not see it. That's one way you know that you're engaging your hip muscle in the front, your flexor muscle, um, to train those muscles to get engaged. That will help you uh, with walking. Okay, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna point, and then I'm gonna go back to flex and relax my bottom leg that's straight down. And then pull that heel of my leg that's bent toward me. Here it's my left. And rotate. As you do this, you're doing an internal rotation of your hip. Push gently your tummy and your belly in. We adjust your shoulders so your shoulder blades are downward as much as possible, like in retracted position, we say. And then push in towards you gently. And try to make sure not to have your foot and leg this part in your sight. Okay, so now I'm going to do the movement. your leg relax down on the floor you can straighten this leg and that feels so good and switch so you put your leg behind your thigh against your hamstring so that you can straighten that leg and try and go and touch the floor with your bottom leg so here it's my left and switch Straight leg, my arms are grasping behind my left thigh against my left hamstring and push, I'm pushing my right leg down into the floor with my heel on me and pushing down. Straightening my legs as much as I can, so I might have to have my leg here, that's fine. So then you're more at the upper part of your thigh, if you can go further into the split basically that's teaching you to do splits as well while your back is being relaxed in a, an extended position which is really good for it after uh, what we did um, and especially after doing lunges as well in squats and uh, so you can go further away like just above the knee if you can if you want to go even further you try and touch your toes but now what's happening, because I don't have the, right now the flexibility to go into a full split comfortably with the hips really well aligned, my bottom leg is going up, which is okay. Bend, if it's too stressful on it, just bend your leg. And I should be bringing my leg in this way, so there is a little bit of a strength training I am still working on. But your leg is supposed to be going in. That could get you into hamstring spasms though, so be careful to um, try and do that. As you need to pull this hip in, you don't want to let it go out this way, pulling it in this way. And drop your shoulders down and switch side. If you can't go this far, if you cannot, go back to the exercise I was doing earlier, where you just grab onto the back of your leg. Again here if it's too hard otherwise, or here if you can go further, and if you want to go further than that, then do the one I'm doing. If you're more advanced than what I'm doing right now, then you're going to have to wait, or if you know how to do it, then go ahead and do it. You're on your own. As I am not there yet. Then keep pulling that knee in so that you're squaring your hip. Slight chin tuck, 
Relaxing your shoulders. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. We're gonna do a couple more of this. You get the gist of it though. So here, one, two, three, four, five. You could hold that 20, 30 seconds, a minute. Switch side. If you can touch your toe, go ahead. If you can't, go back, rewind. Uh, not rewind, but uh, go back in the video and go earlier on what I was doing, repeat that. Try and get that knee to move in so you can keep your hips as square as possible. Good. Now here, bit of uh, movement with the feet here, loosening things up. I'm gonna pull the pillow away. Press into the floor with your hands, opening your shoulders. Just rock side to side. Just be careful you don't have anything jabbing you in the back. As I have a, actually a zipper right now that's jabbing me in the back. So that's the downside of wearing cycling shorts like I am. I should have been wearing an exercise uh, short because this one it's not good for doing what I'm doing as uh, I'm going to move a bit over here and show you another exercise as now uh, it's jabbing at my um, SI joint. So here this is a really good stretch. My head is rotating opposite to where my knees are. Try and get your shoulder to touch the floor. If it cannot, just take practice and just keep working on it. Work on the breath. Remember we worked that breath work earlier. Three breath in. Hold three breath and exhale three breath out. Only do that when you're in a really relaxed state though. If you're struggling too much with an exercise and it's not uh, comfortable at all, just uh, do like a regular nice deep breathing and out. Just don't hold it uh, if it's too strenuous uh, aerobically. I'm going to straighten the top leg and I'm gonna, I can reach my toe, so I'm doing that. If I can't reach my toe or I have more restriction than this, I use a pillow. You can even double it, the pillow. You can keep your knee bent. I do that with my clients on the table a lot. You can straighten the bottom leg. That's good for the back to get that stretch and then just hold this, this position. That's very good. And then eventually you straighten this leg and then one day you'll be able to touch. If you can't touch with your foot, don't worry. And do this movement, pointing, flexing, that's called nerve tension. That's good for your nerve that's sitting inside your sheath. That it has to, to be protected. Because once it's damaged, it's done for it. Okay, so here. Very good. Bend the knee. And you're going to go back here. Do a nice little stretch into the floor. One leg at a time. You're going to move the pillow to the other side if you need the pillow. Knees bent together. And I'm going to rotate over. Watch for that zipper here that's bugging me. Up. And then over to the other side. If I don't have the pillow, I can keep this leg bent. Uh, but I don't have to. Um, even without the pillow, I still can do this one. With my knee bent up here. And then I try and push my arm down here. Readjusting my shoulders. So I can really elongate. Um, and touch the floor with as much of my body as possible. And then I'm going to straighten the leg, the top leg. Now with the leg straighter down below as opposed to bending it and bringing it up, it's harder to touch your toes, um, yet it's still doable. Um, but if you can't, then that's not a big deal, you don't have to. And then flex and point. 
And you could have a pillow for your head if you wanted to. Point flex. And you can go as low, you can go much slower than this too. That's good. And bring your knee up and stretch into the floor. Just move that zipper I have in the way. There we go. And we're going to push back. So good rule of thumb, don't wear cycling shorts that have zippers on the side or back or anywhere really around the hip. Uh, around the side, thigh is not so much a problem and it's around the hip and uh, back that you don't want any zipper. Even a button would be uncomfortable, anything sticking out. Uh, or thick fabric, bulky uh, as to stitch for example. Make sure it doesn't have any of that. It makes it very uncomfortable uh, against, uh, you know, uh, against the tissues, especially when it's more bony. There we go. And like I said, you could be even be using a pillow. I always like to use a pillow and stay right here if you're not sure how you're feeling uh, as far as your balance or if you have a bit of blood pressure. Be careful with doing these exercises. Always check with your doctor and, um, and just try to take little baby steps of a few elements here and there. Don't necessarily do the whole routine that I might be showing you in any given videos. All right, so now I'm gonna set up. And to set up the best way, especially if you have any low back issue or if you know some kind of a flare up, is to go on all four. And then if, then if you need something else to go further into more assistance, have a nice sturdy step stool or chair to help yourself to sit up. And that's all I have for today. Namaste. Have a great rest of your day, evening, morning, afternoon. For me, it's have a great evening and good night. Exotique Biology